If you are buying used PC parts or you're looking to buy a used gaming PC, then that right there was actually a costly mistake that I did that almost cost me the whole series in the first episode of the $100 flip up challenge season three. This was a series that I made where I took $100 and I flipped my way up over the course of three and a half months. And finally, as of yesterday, we got to an RTX 4090 gaming PC that works flawlessly and we hit our dream target goal. So the season was a success. However, along the way, there were mistakes, there were blunders that I'd made that I wish I'd never have made because it did cost me more money and time. And we'll start off with the first episode where what we saw right there at the start of this video was me buying a cheap used gaming PC for 80 Aussie dollars. Now this PC was advertised as working fine. It had a GTX 760 and a second gen i5, which was a decent PC for the price, providing it worked properly. And when I went to check it out, he showed me the PC working, but he didn't show me it running a stress test. And so in the future, if I'm really strapped for cash, as I was in that first episode, I was on a strict budget, I would definitely ask to see something like even a Unigine Heaven benchmark running which is just a really quick and easy to install benchmark. And if the computer dropped out, I then would have had a little bit more bargaining power to say, hey, there's something wrong with this PC. Maybe I can take it for $50 because that would have given me a little bit of extra budget to change over the power supply. And that was the problem in the end. The power supply was just not good enough to run this PC at its default settings. So when we got home, we found out this bad news of the PC not working and I had to work around it because again, I had no money left on this strict $100 budget. So essentially what we did here to get this PC working normally, as you would put it, we put in a power limit on the GPU as well as went into the BIOS and essentially tuned down the i5-2500. Now the good thing here was it lowered the temperatures on both the GPU and the CPU, making it so that the system would be less prone to crashing that in itself, but it also lowered the stress placed on the power supply. Now, after we got this set up all running 100% stable, the guy who came around and bought it, then I gave him a guarantee. And I said, if this PC doesn't work properly, come back and I'll change over the power supply for you. And he was happy to then get that PC. And so what we did in this episode, because there's a game and there's rules, and I'm very competitive when it comes to uh, playing any sort of game within a set of rules, I then sold the PC, gave the guarantee, but I did what insurance companies do essentially. I took the guy's money and then used his own money as his guarantee. And so if something went wrong, I could have used that money that I got on the sale to fix the computer up. Essentially, I did feel a little bit bad about what I did there. And it's something that I've never done in the history of Tech Yes City. And I won't do it again, I don't think, because this was the hardest thing coming into episode one. The massive amount of inflation that we've seen since we did season one of the $100 flip up challenge, it's made it a lot harder to do this series on a hundred Australian dollars. And so going into maybe season four or the next time we do it, I may have to just up the budget to say 150 Aussie dollars to start with, because it was really hard to do this series starting off with a hundred Aussie dollars. I had actually looked before we started this series for over two weeks, a good two weeks, just looking and waiting for that solid deal to come up. And it finally did come up, but it wasn't essentially in itself a solid deal. Anyhow, let's go through the rest of the episodes here, things that were done wrong and things that I would change, as well as things that I did really well and wouldn't change at all right after today's video sponsor. Season three of the $100 Flip Up Challenge is brought to you by VIP SCD Keys, bringing you that $15 Windows 10 Pro Key license when you use that coupon code BFTYC. Links in description below. So episode two, this is where things for me personally got really exciting. We then had a bigger budget, $273 versus $100 in the first episode to then play around with and get more deals. And so what I decided to do in this episode was try and piece out two setups now to try and get our way up into a better tier of PC. 
And so this episode was basically almost perfection. I really look back at this and there wasn't a whole lot I would have done differently. I got this GTX 760 for a really good price. I got a PC for a really good price. Also got a budget power supply for a decent price too. However, there was one big mistake and that was we got an HD 7970 and we picked it up from a mailbox and we got it home and it just did not work at all. It was just straight out not working when the person said it was working. Now, it is their bad that they did lie about the condition of the card, but this is what happens and I find this happens actually from my local area and I'm not sure about what happens all over the world because I'm only in one place, but I've just found from personal experience, I have the most failure rate of GPUs on the used market with older Radeon cards. It's just something that happens quite numerously, and we'll see in later in the series, this actually, this is not the first time it happens just within the series. It happens again, and after that, I actually decided on a new set of course of action to, when I buy these older Radeon cards, I actually don't hand over the money. I just say, look, if you want to give us the card, I'll then test it and make sure it works if I can't see it working. And then if I confirm it working, I'll then give you the money. And this was actually one um, thing that we did in a used PC parts hunt where we got an RX, I think it was an RX 588 gig for 50 Aussie dollars and we just could not get it working. It was a complete dud. And so I've still got the card here. The guy said he wants to come and pick it up but I'm pretty sure he'll never come and pick it up because it's not worth his time to even come and pick up a faulty RX 580. However, the good news with this particular HD 7970, the faulty card that we got for $20, I, in the end, I wasn't so salty because we did get our money back. The problem was it almost cost me a scuffle, like an actual proper punch on with a guy. We got pretty close because I just, I really, I don't like getting hosed. It's one of the most scummiest things you can do so my sort of levels of frustration go through the roof. And this guy, I think he was being, I guess, misled by his partner into the condition and the whole thing that was going on. I think the partner of this dude, and I think she told him that it was working and I must have done something to it. And so, <laughs> and so he's like, what's the problem? And I said, look, dude, you sold me a card. I tested it out. It's not working at all. I want my money back. And then he was like, oh, okay, 20 bucks, be on your way. Anyhow, coming out of episode two, we managed to finish a whole setup and we went on to episode three to sell that setup, but we also had practically another whole setup pieced out where we only then needed a GPU. So this then leads us into episode three and here's where we sold both those setups because we sold the first one we then just got a gtx 970 for really cheap for 50 aussie dollars sold that second setup and we had a again a budget that was nearly now double what it was in the previous episode too and this is when we get to around 500 aussie dollars this is when i've got a little bit more freedom and i'm really enjoying myself and in fact episode three was the biggest video i've edited on my channel it was actually a bit of an achievement for tech yes city and episode three so we started off this episode with absolute thunder and we got free monitors and the first seller was we got two monitors for nothing one of them ended up not working but then we went to go pick up another monitor for ten dollars and the guy just ended up just giving it away for free so i guess that's sort of like karma in a good way it balances out so we had bad luck in the second episode that was no fault of our own and sort of like the karma then comes in and makes it so that you get lucky in ways and so we got the free monitors and two of those three ended up working fine but also we then picked up a power supply here and there was something that i did really well here and that's of course check the whole product before you uh take off and i was lucky i did because they didn't include some of the cables with this semi-modular power supply. Now, make sure every time you're buying a product, just check over it, make sure it's okay. Like if you're checking out a GPU, make sure nothing looks like it's burnt out, for example. If you're checking a monitor and you don't have time to check that it turns on, just quickly go over and press the buttons quickly, make sure they all press in fine, and also check for scratches and cracks on the screen. However, one interesting thing about this whole series was this PC at the start that we sold with the GTX 970, it was a PC that did come back with some problems, but they weren't any fault of my own. I think something went wrong and he installed something dodgy because he came back and it was just a corrupted Windows and it was checking when it booted up 
and doing the whole uh, skip disk checking message. And so I reinstalled Windows completely for him. And I just said to him, look, don't open any dodgy files that you get and you don't know and they're not from trusted sources. And so he messaged me about a month later, said the PC was working all fine after that initial two week blunder that occurred there. So later on in this episode, we then tasted just like episode two, the next example of a faulty Radeon car. This was an RX 570 that we got with a bundle with a fourth gen i5 RAM motherboard CPU cooler and also a power supply as well. So we got this bundle for a pretty decent price, I thought. However, when we got it home, we found out that the RX 570 just didn't work at all. Now I went to this guy's house, he shook my hand, he told me everything was fine. But then when I started questioning him about the GPU and I said, mate, this doesn't work. He just went through and made a heap of um, sort of uh, excuses but also one thing you can tell when someone's full of crap is they then start insulting you. And that's when you know, okay, something was wrong to begin with. And they just start insulting you for no basis. You're just like, look, this is faulty. You sold me a faulty product when you said it was working. I want my money back. So this one actually got a bit heated and he ended up blocking me in the end. But before that, he actually had a BIOS password on his computer. And so I knew because I knew sometimes this can go sideways. I managed to get the password out of him for that BIOS before he ended up blocking me. And so this meant that we had a PC minus a GPU that still worked. So I wasn't too salty about this, but I did learn one thing. And that is when there's a fan blade missing on a GPU, uh, definitely tread with caution and test the GPU and make sure it works before you buy it. In this case, he said it was working and he showed me screenshots of his PC working and he was gaming, except none of the shots that he showed me was of him actually playing games. And that was the problem with the GPU. As soon as you loaded up a stress test or anything, within a few seconds, the whole GPU just crashed out the system. And so it was after this deal, I then changed my stance on these older cards. And I said to these guys who are selling these RX 570s and 580s, I'm not buying them until I've confirmed that they work absolutely fine. And so that's my rule going forward, whether it's at their place, whether I have to set something up in my boot to test the card out before I buy it, which I'm pretty sure even if I did that, a lot of the people that know the cards don't work, they're just going to say, oh, actually, nah, mate, I don't have time for this. I don't have time for this. There'll be some, you know, crap excuse, but either way, you're going to save yourself time and hassle. And so now moving into episode four, coming off the back of that uh, previous hosing in episode three. I was pretty frustrated and so there was a guy with a GTX 1650 and he was going to sell it for me for $80 and he said he was from Brisbane, he was coming down to the Gold Coast, he'll drop it off at my home. So when he came to my home, I actually said to him, mate, do you mind if we just check this graphics card out, make sure it's working 100%, I just got hosed. So he said, yep, sure, came in and then when we started testing it, the fan was just making this horrible, horrible noise. And I said to him, you hear that too, right? And then he's like, yeah. And then he told me, well, actually, I'm selling it for my son. I'm actually not selling. This is not my product. And so I literally said to him at the time, I'm like, well, that checks out. The son didn't want any confrontation because there's something wrong with it. So I said to him, please tell your son that there was something faulty. He should have mentioned that in the ad. And then after that, he was like, yeah, I agree. And so we agreed on 50 Aussie dollars. And so I saved $30, but then I had to use a little bit of money to change the fan over and replace it with something that didn't look ideal, but it, did, it certainly did perform ideal. Now, another thing with the PCs that we sold in the previous episode, we ended up mixing and matching some of the GPUs and some of the deals that we got. And so we really sort of micromanaged our setups just to get the most profit possible. And then we came into episode four with absolute thunder and this is where things started to get really good in terms of just headway to flip i guess mid-range pcs where we started off the episode picking up an rtx 2080 super combo with a ryzen 7. now initially the guy said it was a 2080 and a ryzen 5 and then when we picked up the parts and got them home and tested it all working it was actually a 2080 super and a ryzen 7 so we actually scored bigger on this deal 
than we did on other deals in the series. So again, it's always what we're seeing within this series, even up until episode four, is we get this bad luck, then we get this good luck, then we get this bad luck, then we get this good luck. And so then we're coming in with a bit of good luck here. Now, one thing I did do with this setup was it had a 750 watt gold rated power supply as well as a water cooler. And so what I decided to do was take those parts out of the build, especially the 750 watt power supply, and I put in a 550 watt power supply because later on in that episode, we picked up an RTX 2080 Ti. Now the 2080 Ti is a pretty power hungry card. Actually, it uses up quite a substantial amount more power than an RTX 2080 or a 2080 Super. Even though they're so close in their numbering and their naming, don't let the TI fool you. It actually uses up quite a bit more power. So using that 750 watt power supply, mixing and matching your parts, you can extract so much value out of this. In fact, we're going to have an episode where I'm doing this on budget PCs, just mixing and matching and showing you guys how I maximize profit on pretty much all my flips by mixing and matching parts. It's such an important thing to do this because essentially that way you don't have to go out and buy another $100 power supply when you've got ample amounts of good power there across two different power supplies. You've just got to match them to the right computer. Now, after this though, I did make a mistake and that is we got an RTX 2080 Ti. And you are like, Brian, that's not a mistake. A 2080 Ti is a good GPU. But I realized it's a good GPU for my personal use. Now with the 2080 Ti setup, and this leads in now to episode uh, five, we ended up getting less money for the 2080 Ti setup than we did for the 2080 setup. And this is one thing that I learned with 2080 Ti's. I'm actually personally for flipping them. I just think for the price, you can get an RTX 3070. And now RTX 3070s flip a lot better. 2080 Ti, actually the PC, I was sitting on that for quite some time and in fact we had an rtx 3050 going into this episode and we used that in a setup and we got 850 aussie dollars for that rtx 3050 even though it was in a setup and then the 2080 ti pc we only got a thousand dollars so we got less money for that 2080 ti uh, pc than we did for our 2080 now the 2080 was admittedly in a setup but i found after a thousand dollars setups don't do so well and the reason for this is if you're going into higher brackets, say you're selling a $2,000 um, setup, a lot of people at this level, they want to buy their own monitor and especially they want to buy their own keyboard and mouse. And so including these items is really not that attractive after say in Australia about thousand Aussie dollars or in the US it'd be about 600 US dollars. And I find this level is where people sort of factor in their own personal customization over the convenience and the value that the setup adds and essentially under these price points people are like well it's got a monitor it's got a keyboard mouse it's great value this is all i need and you're getting those monitors you're getting those keyboard and mouse combos for a very good price so you're adding the value and they're getting they're extracting the value but after that point that customization and that personalization comes in and it comes in much heavier and so this is why generally on the higher end you won't see so many setups for sale and even if you do they essentially lose money versus just selling the PC by itself. And so after this $1,000 level, I really shy away then from including monitors and especially keyboards and mice because I find people just want to make their own decisions. And so it actually wasn't too surprising that for an RTX 3050 with an older i7, we got nearly the same money in a setup as we did for a better i7 DDR4 memory and a 2080 Ti and a much better system with a much better power supply. I was just surprised. That's just the market letting me know that people would rather buy RTX 3000, even if it's much less price performance versus RTX 2000. So in that case, I'm pretty much not looking for RTX 2080 Ti's anymore unless they're an absolute bargain. I'm pretty much gonna keep my radar to RTX 2080s, 2070s, and even 2060s, I find a lot of sellers locally are just asking too much for these GPUs versus say an RTX 3060, which is much more desirable in a PC reflip. So coming out of episode five into episode six, it actually took us a long time to flip these PCs. That RTX 3050, actually not so much. That was only a couple of weeks. But the RTX 2080 Ti PC took me quite a while. In fact, I had to lower the price from $1,200 down to $1,100. Then finally someone came in at $1,000 and we sold it for that price because I was just keen to move on 
And even though we still made a little bit of profit, it was just the time involved in selling that PC really made it so that I'm leaning towards RTX 3000. And we had learnt that lesson in itself quickly on the fly. And coming into episode six, we then decided to focus on RTX 3000. Now, admittedly, another thing here was we came into a problem, and I did describe this in other videos outside the series, that the economic conditions right now worldwide are having it so that coming out of this Christmas into these first three months of the year were really bad in terms of sales pre-Christmas versus sales post New Year. And I've never seen it such a contrast in the ups and downs like I've seen it this last Christmas. It was just a roller coaster. And so, of course, I feel that had a big contributing factor towards that PC taking a long time to sell. But also, we then had to, of course, just get a lot more competitive going forward. And so in episode six, I decided to just focus on RTX uh, 3070s because we had picked up really good deals recently on these GPUs for 350 Aussie dollars. And they're actually the Aorus Master Editions, which when the people came and picked up the PCs, they saw the little LCD screens and they were just actually kind of really impressed with that. I think it added to the aesthetic of the build, even though I personally don't care about fancy LED lights and fancy LCD screens. I just know a lot of people buying it want these things on because for them, it's a perceived value add. Uh, however, the first PC that we came into was by far one of the best deals I've got on the series yet. We got this 12400F in this budget uh, banger case with a GT1030 and a bad power supply, but it was the motherboard, the 32 gigabytes of RAM and the CPU and the cooler that made the cream of that build really good value. And so we took that out, put it in another case with RGB and then added in an RTX 3070 and a better power supply and we just scored a bit of a tidy profit on this build. Now, one thing about used power supplies, I've actually probably got to make a dedicated video on this. Used power supplies are so good. I can't stress how much you can make off used power supplies and still give someone a better experience than this perception of, oh, used power supplies must be so bad. And the funny thing is about power supplies, you can run them for five years straight, a lot of these power supplies, and the actual CPU and GPU will drop off before the power supply does. And so you look at the average person who uses a PC maybe a couple of hours a day or four hours a day, a lot of these power supplies that are used have so much life left in them. And it's something that I get critiqued on the channel so much it's just, I find it so funny that a lot of people aren't taking advantage of these used power supplies. It really does shock me because I use them. I get them off Les for $10. We run them through a power supply tester. The power good reading's good. The voltage levels are good. This power supply is 99.9% .9 sure going to have a good life. Now, I've only ever come into one faulty power supply that's given me very weird issues. I've come into faulty used power supplies, don't get me wrong but they've obviously just been faulty from the get-go. I've only ever come into one that sort of seemed to work and then it hasn't worked properly. So that's one out of how many, at least a thousand used power supplies I've come into. Very small failure rate there. But another thing is too, this Christmas recently, we had this massive lightning storm on the Gold Coast. I've never seen anything like it. But actually after that, I had a few PCs come back and they had dead power supplies. But the funny thing was, guess which PCs came back? It was the one with the new power supplies in them. So it's funny to see that the newer power supplies, I think they're skimping out on certain um, uh, materials. And so the used power supplies are actually, in this case, I believe they're a stronger build. They're using better materials or using more of the materials. And so you've just got a stronger product in the end too. And so for me personally, I know with a, without a doubt, used power supplies are one of the most underrated fields in uh, PC gaming bar none they are just so underrated it's almost like for me uh, if someone gave you two lamborghinis and they put beside you two lamborghinis you had a say a 2017 model and a 2022 model and the 2022 model was five hundred thousand dollars and then the 2017 model was um say eighty thousand dollars i would buy the 2017 model like in a heartbeat and i'm sure the majority of people would that's an absolute bargain. And so that's what you're kind of getting with used power supplies. That level of value 
is there all the time pretty much because people just don't want to touch a $10 power supply versus a $50 power supply. But the only thing different there versus the Lamborghini example I just gave you is perception. That's all it is. It's just perception. People think used power supplies are bad. Therefore, they judge them at the value that they judge them at. But for me, I know that that $10 power supply so many times is just such a good buy. And in fact, if we compare it to a used car, you're going to come into used car sales where you sometimes do get a bad apple. In fact, I'd say the used car market would have much higher percentage of getting a bad apple than getting a bad apple on the used power supply market. But it's just one thing that I find fascinating. I can make a whole dedicated video towards it, talking about more of my experiences with used power supplies. But it's one thing that we did add so much value coming into episode six. We just took advantage of that and got those used power supplies and they did such an amazing job as well as throughout the whole series. That was one of the biggest value adds that we did in these episodes. Now, also in episode six, there was this uh, Ryzen 7 that we got on a used parts hunt. We had to bend some pins back. That worked absolutely fine, the Ryzen 7. But the Ryzen 5, we picked one up for $50 and we'd actually been messaging this guy for months and he finally came around, but he said it was just bent pins. But then when I got it, he just handed me the CPU out the door. I went home. I got it home and there was two broken pins. And so the CPU didn't initially work. But one thing about this CPU was we took some donor pins off a just a throwaway AM2 CPU. You can get these people just have them sitting around. I give them away to people if they want donor AM2 CPUs. I've got heaps of them. But you grab a couple of pins off these because they're a little bit longer, a little bit thicker. And you can then use them and put them in the motherboard socket and then piece off the Ryzen 5 on top of that. Now we did this and it worked absolutely fine after that, this Ryzen 5. But one thing I realized after doing that and I didn't mention in the episode was you've actually got to have the right motherboard for it too. Uh, in this case, we had this Maxon Challenger motherboard and so the actual socket, the AM4 socket was low enough so that the pins could stick out ever so slightly. However, if we were to use it on a B550 uh, from ASRock, for example, and we drop the pins in, they actually don't fit properly. They just go down further into the, uh, into the holes and they don't connect properly with the CPUs. So that was one thing that I found out that was interesting. I was like, wow, okay. So you've actually, if you're doing this sort of fix, you've got to make sure that it um, has the right motherboard uh, actual socket that's low enough to be able to do this. Now, in hindsight, if I had micro soldering skills, I'd just solder the pins back on. Uh, but what I decided to do was guarantee this PC for 12 months. And so if there's any problems, I just said to the guy, look, if there's any problems, come back, I'll fix them up. But even after that, I'll guarantee this CPU, especially the CPU and the motherboard, I'll guarantee that combo, I think, for the life of the PC. But that being said, I will in the future, I will get onto micro soldering when I've got more time, because there is so many faulty parts that I do come into, a lot of you guys donate us faulty parts too, and I'd love to actually try and fix them up and get them working again, because there's just so much, uh, I guess, waste that happens, and I don't like wasting things. It's just one thing that I don't like doing, it's just wasting parts that, whether they're so close to working or they're working, but they just need that kick to get them over the edge to work again. I just hate seeing them go in the bin. I just think it's such a waste. Anyhow, in episode six, we ended up flipping three PCs in total, and that then put us over a budget of 3,033 Australian dollars. And this leads into the final episode here with episode seven, where we got the RTX 4090 PC. It just came up on Marketplace. I was looking on Marketplace for RTX 4090s because I wanted to check and gauge the price of how much it would cost me to build an RTX 4090 gaming PC. Because I was like, well, I'm probably one episode away. If I can maybe make almost a thousand dollars profit in episode seven, then episode eight, we can get our RTX 4090 PC. And so as I'm looking for this RTX 4090 and checking used prices, a whole system comes up for three and a half. And I'm like, okay, well, I'll just, I'll message the guy. Hey, would you take $3,000 cash? And then he's like, yes and so i'm just like okay what's the what's the address i'm there and he's like here's the address i just jumped straight in the car well actually i did record a little bit of the intro because i was so excited but i just said i'm coming as soon as he gave me the address i'm like i'm on my way it's going to take me this long to get there and so that way you lock it in right if you're saying i'm on my way and you're locking it in they're not going to sell it to someone else and the good thing there is when i got and picked it up 
no one else had dropped in an offer at that time. And so I was really lucky to get that RTX 4090 deal for the price that we got it for. And so I got that home and all we needed was really to fix up this little Wi-Fi card that was having problems. And so in the past, Les has actually gave us these little uh, Wi-Fi chips he's pulled out of dead laptops. And those Wi-Fi, one of those worked absolutely fine, replacing this MediaTek brand that when I did a Google search, a lot of people were having problems with. Because one thing I didn't say in that episode was that when I he showed me Horizon Zero Dawn and we played it a little bit, and there was like some huge micro, like it wasn't even micro stutters, it was just like stutters. And I was like, okay, like probably something bad's installed on this PC, but we didn't have any of those stuttering issues when I reinstalled and changed over the Wi-Fi. Another thing is too, some of you guys have asked me um, behind the scenes, uh, would you interview the guy <laughs> and so i'm actually going to meet up with him in about a month's time he's importing something it's outside of pcs he's actually importing something and we got chatting about that and i was actually really curious to see the results of his import and so i said to him when you get it and you set it all up can you just message me and i'll come around and check it out because i'm really curious and so i'm actually going to meet up with him in about a month maybe six weeks or something like that and um i'm going to bring him over a six pack as well we'll use that 30 dollars left over in the series to bring him over a six pack and i'll actually if there's questions you want me to ask him i can ask him that because he's just such a nice guy he's actually a really cool guy and so that's one thing that's come out of um me doing used pc parts hunting is i always meet so many cool people on the road and it's actually the funnest thing about doing this series is just meeting people and having a good time and i think you're going to get that in any sort of field that you're passionate about and you're out and about and so lately i've definitely wanted to get back to doing more of this used stuff for you guys and i guess focusing on doing more deals more flips more used budget gaming because it's just so much fun outside of making the videos and outside of just the tech itself and so episode 7 really brought that into to the picture with this rtx 4090 pc pickup but anyhow guys with all that out of the way we're concluding this massive recap of the 100 flip up series some of the things that went on behind the scenes that i didn't previously mention as well as making some mistakes along the way but the biggest thing is we've learned from them and i think for me personally the two most important things coming out of this whole series was if someone's selling a gaming pc to you make sure they're running a gaming benchmark before you buy it and number two if it's an older radeon card make sure that thing can run a gaming benchmark too before you hand over the money so those are the two things that i'm just that's in my protocol now in fact we put them into effect recently uh, as we said before in the uh, video we got an rx 580 we made sure that that was not working and we didn't hand over the money but also i recently another guy on marketplace he was selling a PC and then he said, oh, I've also got an RX 570, mate. And I just said to him, uh, yeah, well, with the RX 570, if you're happy for me to test it and confirm it working, then I can hand you over the money. And I actually never got a reply from the guy. So <laughs> this new protocol that we've got going on is definitely working, at least in the land down under. Now, it's actually funny because a lot of people are telling me they have a lot of success with older RX 570s and 580s. But this card lineup of cards is single-handedly the card lineup that I've had the most problems with by amplitudes higher than any other graphics card that I've ever had uh, problems with. It's just on another league in terms of the amount of problems I get, especially for what the effort and time involved and the value of getting these cards is worth. Anyhow, guys, with all that aside, I hope you enjoyed this massive recap. Hope you took something out of this personally. If there's uh, any feedback, as always, love reading you guys and the comments that you drop down below. So if there's anything you would do differently as well, anything you'd critique me on or anything you want to see change for the next season, then do be sure to let us know in the comment section below. I think personally for me, I am thinking about starting off with $150 next time because $100 was just, it was so hard. Like it was really hard compared to season two and season one when I started off those seasons and just it was just such a it's night and day difference after this whole massive inflation push came through and um i'm noticing that and really we should probably adjust the hundred dollars to the m2 money supply which is about 40 percent. so maybe 140 dollars we start the series off aussie dollars anyhow guys hope you enjoyed this one look forward to seeing you in another tech video very soon peace out for now bye